the public hearings. Our first is the Shell gas station rebuild in Arley. Good Can evening, I commissioners. Tell us about it. Chair. Been working on it. So tonight we're considering, or excuse me, you're considering um, a CUP and design review for uh, the rebuild of the Shell gas station. Um, as you know, this is an existing gas station at the corner of Powell and Frontage Roads adjacent to I-80. Um, it's surrounded on the north and west sides by the Hilton Garden Inn and its parking lot. The bright green on this map shows the Bay Trail. This is a zoom in just to give you a sense. Um, the Bay Trail is on the sidewalk in the bottom right corner, continues north on the sidewalk there, and is a bike lane in the road uh, and uh, obviously the sidewalk for the pedestrians um, going to the west. So these are photographs of the existing uh, Shell station, just to give you a sense of what's there. I'm sure you've all seen it many times. And this is a plan of what's existing now. So the car wash is, uh, you know, pull along a driveway here and the building itself is here with the exit at a separate uh, driveway onto Powell here. Frontage. There are, there's a second driveway on Powell and then, or excuse me, on frontage and then two on Powell here. Uh, this white building here is the small uh, cashier and convenience store now. And these small white dots are all of the pumping stations. Um, as you can see, it's not um, extremely well laid out. These three stations are double-sided, but the rest of these stations are only one-sided, whereas most gas stations try to have each station be two-sided. So the impetus for this redevelopment is that it could be better designed and to expand the convenience store. This is the proposed site. The car wash stays on the north side, but slides a little farther to the west, and the driveway wraps around the convenience store, which is here at 2,700 square feet. There is a crosswalk from the Powell Street sidewalk to the sidewalk surrounding the building. That's a raised um, kind of hump, speed hump, for drivers to go over. The fuel tanks are here. This outlines the canopy. There are. Uh, excuse me, five two-sided pumps making 10 stations, um, not 10 pumps, um, and only one driveway on both Powell and Frontage. This shows the convenience store with a zoom in for the parking. There are three parking spaces in front of the store. Each of the fueling stations counts as one of the parking spaces, and this is why there's only three. For bike parking, there's one rack inside the building here with a door access here for employees, two racks here for store users, um, and in addition, there is equipment, uh, vacuum, air, water, and then trash and recycling between these two parking spaces. The trash enclosure sits here with easy access to the parking lot for collection. And there's also a sign here uh, reading yield to pedestrians for drivers entering the driveway here. For the Bay Trail amenities, uh, showing frontage here, these uh, dashed line boxes here are uh, paint on the sidewalk that read driveway crossings ahead. And then there's a sign here for drivers exiting reading bikes and peds trail crossing, as well as a stop sign. Uh, the amenities are a kiosk with Bay Trail information, uh, a bike rack, a fix-it station similar to the one out front here, and a bench. This is the east elevation of the store facing towards the canopy. Uh, the front doors are here. There is a transaction access and writing shelf kind of window right here. Uh, the door to the employee bike parking is here and the trash enclosure will be removed from the building sitting in front of it in this dashed line. And then the exit from the car wash. The materials for this building include lap siding, ACM panels, cement plaster, IFS accent bands, and I wrote down what that stands for if you're curious. It's about finishing. Um, aluminum storefront, wood corbels, and wall sconces. So here is where the wood corbel sticks out. And then looking at the south elevation facing Powell, this is the store here, and this is the car wash tunnel beyond. Um, there's an exit door. There are windows facing onto Powell. 
This dotted line is an electrical service cabinet. And then the two elevations facing, in this case, to the west and in this case to the north. Uh, and again, this is the driveway crosses in front of this building and enters here, or excuse me, the car wash driveway. Yeah. Here are elevations of the canopy. Uh, this is the view from Powell, from uh, frontage, and from the hotel parking lot to the west. These boxes here are where the signage will be. Um, this roof itself is white with um, red and yellow striping along the edge. This is the stormwater plan. Uh, it's showing the drainage areas. The blue area drains to this planter circled in red. This pink area drains to this planter here. This is the property line, oh, excuse me, uh, with the city property on the right. So there is an additional planter here for drainage from this area. Here is the landscape plan. These uh, yellow grasses show the plantings for those planter, or the, the um, stormwater planters. And uh, the remainder is bay friendly planting. Uh, most are low water use, with the exception of the um, unspecified flowers, which is the orange coloring here and here, which is a high water use. Uh, there are two existing trees on site that will be removed. They are here and here. The building is going on top of them. Um, and these, you can see there are three street trees, Brisbane Box proposed along Powell, as well as 12 of the crepe myrtle throughout the site. This is the site plan showing signage. There is an, a pole sign here, monument sign here, the two canopy signs here and here, <laughs> the loop sign, which is the name of the convenience store, and the car wash sign here. So the uh, canopy signs will be three feet by three feet. Um, the monument sign will maintain its horizontal orientation with uh, a simple shell logo and exposed LED for the price signs. And then the um, the pole sign will maintain its existing dimensions of nine by nine for the sign with a total height of 25 feet. Excuse me, and the monument sign is eight feet tall, 10 feet across. So the pole sign is the, the, pole sign is the same as the existing sign? The pole sign is, it will move location, but it's right. the same dimensions. The, this uh, image is not exactly to scale. It was drawn. It doesn't look like right. it. Yes, it, it was, it was drawn taller. when it was proposed to be 40 feet high. That's and what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. So in, in discussions um, with the applicant, they agreed to keep the existing uh, height of, of the sign. So that this, this drawing is not to the scale that it will be. If you go out and look at the sign that's there, that's the exact same dimensions that will be in the future. It will shift slightly and have new material. It will be completely new sign, but same dimensions. And that will be on 24-7? It's illuminated, I take it? Yes. Do you, do you know, is it LED lighting? It is all LED lighting inside the signs. Oh boy. But, but with acrylic in front of it. Yeah. The right. only I, exposed I LED that, is, are these price signs here. So there's also a loop sign above the door here and a car wash sign um, above the exit facing towards frontage. And here are the square footages. So as far as conformity, um, obviously this is an existing gas station. Um, so it's a continuing use, uh, now classified as motor vehicle sales and services service station. Um, it needs a conditional use permit in the MUN with uh, regional re retail overlay. Um, I explained the details in your staff report. Uh, for car parking, um, this is our first CUP with parking under the new code. So um, this is, watching it get implemented. The demand uh, for a service station is 12 parking spaces. Um, as you remember, they're allowed to have a range of anywhere from 66% to 110% of that demand, um, which allows eight to 13 parking spaces. Um, the applicant originally proposed 15, and when they were informed that they would need an additional use permit for greater than the 13 that's allowed, they lowered that to 13. So the 13 spaces are the 10 spaces in front of the pumping station and the three in front of the store. As for bike parking, they are required to have uh, two exterior and two interior, that's one rack each. Um, they're showing six 
uh, exterior, the four at the store and one on the curb, and the two interior for employees. And then for landscaping, uh, they're required to have 10% of the site landscaped, and they're showing 13%. So is it typical to count the pump stations as a parking space? That is how our code is written. And I believe that's how it was in the past as well. I, I, I I'm not so. sure, but that's the way the current code is. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, spe it specifies that. I love that. Seems Thinking great. being that uh, a lot of people, if they're going to run into the convenience store, they just keep leave their car at the gas pump, and they run go in the convenience yeah. store, then come back, and they drive away. But with 2,500 square feet, they're growing by five times. I think people are going to go there without actually getting gas. Hopefully, we can talk to the applicant. Hopefully, uh, by bicycle or walking. <laughs> hopefully, carrying <laughs> your food on your bicycle. Yeah. Uh, continuing with zoning uh, conformity, uh, the design guidelines, the citywide design guidelines, are um, are in the majority met by this project. There are four that are at least partially unmet, uh, and they are uh, consider three dimensionality of buildings, conceal mechanical and building equipment from the right of way, specifically the cabinet along the south wall facing onto Powell, uh, creativity with architectural features using art, color, and detail and Green Streets, both Powell and Furniture Green Streets, uh, public art should be located along Green Streets. So the standard conditions of approval do uh, cover the required screening of equipment um, and the public art program requires that either art be supplied or a fee be paid. So that will apply, those conditions are there. Um, but uh, the, the, the uh, citywide guidelines are not completely met by the proposed plans. Um, as far as the signage, uh, this project is on a corner and therefore is allowed 280 square feet of signage and the proposed is approximately 210, so it's well within its signage requirements. The operating characteristics are 24 hours a day, 365 days a week. That is what the current gas station operates as and it will continue so. For employees, there is one full-time and one part-time staff person per eight-hour shift. There are three shifts per day. The bathrooms will be open whenever the store is and are available for Bay Trail users. You do not need to be a customer um, of gas or the store. Uh, the store will sell soup and salad, uh, packaged food. It will have an espresso machine and obviously auto accessories. There will be no preparation of food on site and no alcohol for sale. Uh, the site lighting is generally downward facing and shielded from the surround or their surrounding sites. Uh, these are the findings for the conditional use permit. They're also in your staff report. Uh, in addition, this is a project that requires a use permit in the regional retail uh, overlay zone, and so there are three additional findings. All of these findings can be made um, and were in your resolution. There were comments made by uh, BPAC. There were numerous comments. Most of these were already met in, uh, in the existing site plan. Um, as far as the signage for exiting and entering and things like that. These are the two comments that uh, remain unmet, the colored and textured sidewalk treatment along the Bay Trail segment and bollards or planters along the curb at the corner of Powell and Frontage. Uh, we're both from BPAC. And then uh, the handout that I gave you this evening that's on the dais um, was a comment from the public, Tom DeVries. He mentioned that he felt the store was very large. He did comment that it was, uh, I believe, half the size of a football field. That's incorrect, it's about 5% of a football field. Um, and then he also commented that there's nowhere to sit and eat, and there is in fact seating inside um, inside the building facing the, those south windows. So, um, In addition to the standard conditions of approval, uh, these six conditions uh, were added, um, and the applicant is aware of them. The bathroom should be available to Bay Trail users. Uh, the applicant shall maintain the fix-it station and uh, Bay Trail kiosk and shall comply with all state and county requirements regarding the removal and replacement of the underground fuel tanks. Uh, the applicant shall make a contribution of 2% of the project valuation for the Frontage Road Median Island project. This is a project the city would like to complete in the future. And the hotel adjacent to the project also made a contribution to this project. Uh, the exposed LED uh, on the fuel price signs will not flash or move in any way other than normal price adjustments. 
and the Brisbane box trees currently shown only on the east side of the Powell frontage shall be continued throughout the planter strip along the sidewalk. With that, staff recommends approval of this project um, subject to the attached conditions of approval. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, do you know why there's uh, two rows of prices on the uh, yeah. price sign? I believe that is due to many gas stations these days have kind of a club membership, and if you have a club membership, you get a lower price, but I'll let the applicant confirm that. And I noticed that uh, there's one fewer gas pump than is there now. Uh, are they doing away with the uh, diesel pump? Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, again, I'll let the applicant answer. When you say uh, the city property, is that is that the public right of way? It is the public right of way. So, what are the restrictions on the public right of way, I, on sort of usage of the public right of way? I, I noticed in the the current site plan, it seems to be pretty much just driveways um, that are in the public right of way. But in the, with the, in the new plan, it, it's it's sort of a lot more of their circulation area actually. There is more circulation. Uh, all of the signs are on their property. Uh, we made sure that there were no signs on the city right of way. There are a number of utility boxes and things that remain in the city property. Um, other than circulation, there is there's there's no specific use um, by the applicant on city property. So the the landscaping is being reconfigured. Um, the driveways are being narrowed. There's there's a general redesign of the site. Uh, but none of the the main uses of the land are on our property. So. I'm also curious about the um, the vents that are required as part of the vapor lock system that that Backmud and what it may be the Air Resources Board require. Now I'm mostly familiar with with like gas station retrofits, and mm -hmm. I think those a lot of time go in a very conspicuous end up in a very conspicuous spot and so I, I didn't I mean this is essentially starting from scratch but mm -hmm. I was curious sort of how those were accommodated I don't recall the exact location of those vents um, again I'm gonna let the applicant speak to that any other questions why is it exempt from CEQA if it's a total reconstruction we well that's that is a CEQA exemption I mean, there is a specific categorical exemption in CEQA for uh, reconstruction of existing facilities. I think it covers up to 10,000 square feet or of building area or something like that. Oh, so it's in the area then, because it's a replacement, right? I mean, essentially. Right. I mean, it's not a new use. The use is already there. Right. So it's just reconstructing an existing use. And uh, the three, aluminum right. storefront, is that aluminum panel those are windows class with two. aluminum framing ah okay hard here yeah yeah class two has have there been security issues here in the past I am wondering why it's 24 7 operation and 24 7 lighting and lots of cameras and has there been any reported incidents here not that I'm aware of but I'll I'll refer okay. to the applicant thank you anything else for me with that, I'm happy to introduce the applicant. Yeah, I, I do have one question. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I was a little unclear about the 1.5 employees, and there's the operating characteristics that talks about, like if there's one employee there, they do transactions through a window. I wasn't really clear on how that works. I I think. Um, I think I misunderstood the applicant originally. I was under the impression that there would be two uh, employees at, there at all times, but in fact, there's one and a half. So the window is generally for <coughs> when there is a staffing shortage, when they're expecting to have one or two people and there's not someone there. So they will then uh, temporarily lock the store for all users and use that window okay. to to do their cash exchanges there. Okay, um, so that's kind of a special circumstance. It's a very special that. circumstance, and the condition of approval um, that d addresses that specifically calls out that it will be infrequent and temporary. Okay. So, anything else? With that, um, I introduce Muthana Ibrahim, the representative of the applicant. Good evening. My name is Muthan Ibrahim with MY Architects Inc. 2960 Camino Diablo Suite 100 in Wild Creek. I would like to thank staff for presenting the project tonight. 
um, the property owner is uh, committed to invest in this uh, project, and we are very excited to rebuild this gas station. I would like to go over the questions that have uh, been raised. Um, regarding the fuel pumps, uh, we're going to keep the diesel. We will have the three products plus the diesel. Um, we have, uh, we proposed five pumps. That's going to be 10 fueling positions, which is going to be equal to what we have today. Regarding the EVR um, and the carbon canister at the vent riser, uh, at this stage we have not located that, but we're not using the EVR tank that you see uh, in some of the gas station, we're using a carbon canister, which is going to sit on the vent riser, and the carbon canister about 12 inches in diameter by four feet long, uh, white. Uh, probably you've seen it on some gas stations. Um, it's, it has a, a less visual effect than having the huge tank like the uh, propane tank, if you see in gas stations. We're not using that. Um, regarding the cameras, basically, um, you know, for um, AU Energy, this is standard. That's what they use to on all their gas stations. They have a lot of cameras, good lighting, you know, for security. And the 24 hours, um, uh, basically, it's safer for the corner for this project than having it just, you know, um, uh, to midnight or 11 o'clock. Uh, basically, you'll have attendance. Uh, 24 hours if there is any issue at the corner, somebody on the phone, call the police if there is any problems. I'm not sure if you have any question for me. Uh, where is the window on sheet A11? Okay, uh, sheet A11, um, we have the entry door, we have two storefront on either side of the entry, and we have uh, um, the side window and the uh, 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 table and bars. Uh, this is facing Powell. Yeah. This is the side, this is the side window over here, and this well, is the that, That's a seating area. Isn't it? There's a counter. Yeah, there is a counter and, and, and bar, uh, stools. 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 And then I, I thought there was, when there was only one person on duty, the store would be locked and customers that needed service would go to a window? No, okay, okay. Let, let, let me explain that. Um, if we go to the elevations, okay, there is a, there is a transaction access here, just 15 by 15. They will oh, use. Could you talk into that? that? Uh, there's a transaction window, uh, 15 by 15 over here, and a, a, a writing shelf. They will use this when they have only one operator inside. And uh, basically, most of the time, we're looking to have most of the time, you know, this store is open with two operators. We're not intended to close this door, but there is sometimes somebody calls, uh, you know, cashier calls sick or something, or, you know, there is trouble arriving to the store and stuff like that. So uh, this transaction access is just for emergency. But you only have uh, a second person half time, so the store would be closed when there was a second person? No. No, basically, they will use uh, two people when they need to, and they can use one person when they need to. And still so, keep the store open. Yeah. So, so basically, um, they, uh, they have one eight hours, and the other person is four hours. But if they need to extend the you know, working hours for the second one, they will have two uh, people at, at each shift. Oh, OK. I misunderstood. I thought the store would be closed if there was less than two people on duty. That's not correct, then. Not correct. I have a question. Um, is there, em if employees need to come by vehicle, is there parking for them? Three spots. Well, it, it seems as though there, there are two spots that are also um, service. service spots, and then there is a, a, a handicapped spot, and disabled that, spot. Nothing. Usually the customer, um, you know, use the pump. This is a gas station. 
people uh, come. I'm talking about the, the people that work there. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. So there is couple, uh, three parkings, uh, two parkings, three parking stall in front of the store. Mm -hmm. and, uh, 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 and, and, and the customer, basically the, the employee might use one of those spots uh, or they use the bike, you know, because we have two bikes for employee inside. But that, those are service, those, those are, are like air and to, water yeah. spots, so that's not really and, feasible. And vacuuming your car after you come out of the... Uh, uh, okay, um, originally we proposed more parking, mm -hmm. but uh, we've been told that we need to go down to 13, and we're counting the fueling positions. And all customers, they don't use those parking in the front of the store. So... Is there street parking? I can't, no, no, no. There's no street parking over there. I don't believe. Okay. Not on Powell. Yeah. It, it, it's very tight there. If you did have 15 parking spaces, where were you putting the other ones? Uh, Okay, the front we don't have, we didn't have the air water station and the planter in front of the building and stuff. But there is, if you take a look at the corner planter, there is a lot of parallel parking that people can park there. Yeah. I in gas stations, people use that space because this yard is going to be, you know, available for them. I, I think I see at least two other places. At where least two could, or three, and and definitely and, and, park and without blocking circulation. And also on top of the tanks, originally we. Uh, uh, proposed uh, parallel parking on top of the tank. Because that's not gonna affect the circulation the for the dispensers below the canopy. But there's a driveway there, I'm yeah. confused. No, I'm not talking about the driveway, I'm talking about the right. corner planter. To their job. Along the corner planter, you know, people can park there. Um. Mm -hmm. And Over usually here. cashier, they, they bike. Uh, to the station. So is there enough room now for parallel parking along that plant? Yes. Yes, I, there is a dimension, 20 feet, three inches or five inches, I can see, to the guard post, and that's enough for passing lane and a parking. Okay. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's what you could say. All right. Are, are the uh, existing tanks to be removed? Yes, uh, we're gonna put new a complete fuel system. And how long will this whole process take? Uh, the reconstruction of the gas station should take about three months. Three, three months. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is Presuming the gas tanks haven't leaked and. Uh, uh, well, we we go through all the approvals, uh, but generally, when we do a gas station, it doesn't take longer than that because we do the, all those tests ahead of time. So that, that process requires approval from, from what agencies? Um, air, um, in addition to the city of Emeryville, um, uh, Bay Area Quality Management District, uh, uh, Coupa, and um, you know, the fire department, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, Hazmat Health Department, Alameda County. What, what's Coupa? Uh, Coupa stands for, uh, it's for the Hazmat, of the underground storage tanks. Um, I don't recall that. Okay, all right. I can find out, definitely. That's okay. Yeah. So, uh, I guess I have one other question. Um, where the, I guess we could look at uh, the overhead here plan. Where the garbage enclosure is and the um, exit for the uh, car wash, there is a, a, a little planting bed. Maybe you can, do you have a little pen you can point to that? Uh, or the, the use of, yes, the, sir. Use the, just use the mouse. Oh, uh, I can have this. Is okay. this this planter area? Can you do it on the, oh. you have to use the mouse? mouse? You have to use the mouse. Oh. There we go. This All one? Right. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, that one right there. Would, would it be possible to put two spaces there if things were shifted slightly? 
actually, uh, this is this is uh, this is a, a, a spot for the cashier. We can put the, the cashier <laughs> would be here. Collecting the, the garbage, uh, usually the owner will contract with the company that uh, pick up the garbage and they pull the bin for them mm -hmm. ahead of time mm -hmm. based on the schedule. Would there so be room for two spots there possibly if things uh, were shifted the, the, slightly? The, there is one, one parking stall here for, for the cashier. Okay. If I could just clarify. Um, so the 13 spaces are the maximum that they can provide without getting a use permit mm -hmm. for going above it. So the parking that you're talking about would have to be very casual and unstriped. Got it. Okay. And, and I would... It'd be as people used it, but not condoned. Not with lines and... Right. Here. Okay. I would just like Understand. to remind the commission that um, one of the kind of driving ideas behind the new general plan and the new zoning is to try to minimize driving and to promote alternative means of transportation, which was one of the, and one of the big innovations in our new regulations is to have these minimum and maximum parking requirements. And now you're seeing how that plays out in a real project. Uh, you know, it might be a little painful, but sometimes it's painful to get people out of their cars. Yep. That was the but idea. It's a, but it's a gas station. It is a, yeah. It's so true. It's attracting it's people with motor vehicles. <laughs> well, there's 10 places for them to park at the fueling stations. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's uh, all. And, and we encourage the here. we encourage the cashier, our cashiers to store. to bike to the store. Sure. The look the okay. It's ridiculous. Well, Are there any I other see questions? a lot of conflicts going. Uh, if you look at the car wash exiting and the people exiting the pumps, and the people backing up, leaving the convenience store, you've got. I show 10 arrows in one area. It's highly congested. You've got somebody coming out of the car wash, you've got people coming the same way from the pumps, one, two, three direct in the same direction as a car wash, and people backing up to get out onto Powell from the convenience store. There's a lot of stuff happening here in one small area at the very worst scenario. I always like to look at the worst scenario, not the best. So I don't know how you handle all that. Plus, I don't think you have enough parking for the 2,600 square foot convenience store. I, I'm not asking you to increase it, but I think functionally it's going to be a problem. I design a lot of gas stations, and the the, the clearance that, that we put here. But um, what's the, the distance? Closest, this what is that? 26 feet? Uh, the aisle? This this one is 30, 30, 30? feet, and so this is this is more. Uh, this is like over 10 feet more, this distance here, and this is even more. I don't see any conflict of uh, circulation on site here, based on my experience, and I've been doing gas stations for a long time. Hmm. Okay. I hope I'm wrong. I, I was looking at that too. From the, from the staff report, can you comment on the, the two requests by staff that were not met, the one being the moving the convenience store closer to the corner and the other being um, designing the canopy um, with either a green roof or, or some sort of more striking architectural style? Uh, basically, uh, the relocation of the store to the corner in this area uh, we think is gonna hide the canopy. And usually gas station, once you put the canopy in the back and put the building in the front, you lose a lot of business. And it will not make sense to the gas station owner to invest in this property. And we discussed this with staff ahead of time. Uh, regarding the canopy, uh, basically the, the finance of this project, uh, if we do design more than what we're doing here, it will be, you know, more costly and we cannot justify the project. So, th I, I feel like you, you're going to know that this is a gas station even if the convenience store is on the corner. I mean, there, there's a lot of signage incorporated into the site. Do you, you, you don't feel that with all of the signage that is being proposed that um, that that's adequate? Uh, I agree with you, uh, but uh, uh, practically, once the can the canopy is really the sign for a gas station, people look. Once they see the canopy, they know Chevron here, Shell here, another independent here. They they pull in. Once the canopy is beyond and you have building, 
they move on to the next corner. There is a lot of gas station on the road. So based on that, this gas station owner will lose business. That's why we made it clear to the staff uh, when we started this project that if, that if this is the intention, you know, we're going to leave the gas station as is. What about moving um, the convenience store as shown on, on the plan closer to Powell Street and reconfiguring the car wash driveway? We tried that, it doesn't work. We tried that, and it doesn't work. This is the best layout for this property. Look at the property here. It's chopping through the, mm -hmm. the, the, the lot, and it, we, have, we have to have five dispensers here and a car wash and a store to justify this project financially. Mm. Other than that, the you know, property owner will you know, just leave this gas station as is. We tried, we tried to locate the, the car wash and bring this to uh, Budding um, Powell Street and we did not, you know, uh, we haven't been successful of getting a better layout than this one as far as circulation. Because remember, you have to have the drive-through mm -hmm. for the car wash. This drive-through, you need at least five cars. Mm -hmm. Queuing up. Queuing up. And we have more than that over yeah. here behind, behind the building. So this, is, this layout, uh, I think, is the best layout for this site. And there's no escape queue if you want to get off the line. Okay. F this size property, we cannot have escape Basically, mm. if you want to go to the car wash, this is not a full, usually escape queue for a full service car wash. You go in, you change your mind. Mm -hmm. This is a self-serve. You go in like five minutes, you're out. I wish. I waited online there a long time personally. Okay. Sorry. Sure, sure. <laughs> but see, this type of uh, car wash, was the, which is the self-serve, usually people don't, you know, they are in a hurry to go through this type of car wash. If they have time, they go to a, Oh, you know, you. more sophisticated car wash, okay. which is the, you know, full service. I have another question. Um, sure. I really appreciate having the uh, bike fix it area and the bench is wonderful. And I'm wondering, would it be possible uh, to design uh, the planting bed that kind of wraps around it and comes out a little bit into the uh, it, into the sidewalk uh, on either side on either side of um, the so you, the you bench mean of, so south of the bench and north of the fix it station would it be possible to extend uh, that planting area and, yeah, and kind mean, of enclose it a sure. little because it's the, very exposed there and it's sure. uh, not so it you, doesn't feel great. <laughs> Yeah. And that might you, help. You want to widen the planter at this point? I would like to widen the planter, but more to the point, I would like to enclose the, the bench and the just kind of. Sure, like something like, like this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, you can put the condition on the project and we'll do that. I think it would make it a little more inviting yeah. and. Uh, no problem. It, and th this is the right of way, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> How wide is the, the proposed driveway onto Frontage Road? How wide? Yes. Um, 35. Uh, 35, which is, the width is required for the tanker to offload the product on top of the tanks. What, what's the existing, the exi width of the existing driveway? Okay, the existing road. driveway, two driveways, one for the car wash, let's right. take a look at the survey, one for the car wash and one for the, uh, for the gas station. We combine them into one. 35 feet. And uh, the, 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 yeah, 35 feet. The right, but when you combine them into one, you don't need the dri you don't need the car wash driveway anymore because the car wash is now exiting into the exactly. gas station. Yes. So the driveway should, I mean, you would logically then the driveway should be 24. Should be the same. Okay. The same width. As All right. If you can see those lines here, there is a tanker 63 feet long that has to come five times a week uh -huh. and offload, usually in off hours at night and stuff like that. And we <coughs> usually design those driveway to accommodate that mm -hmm. tanker to offload and, and, and they come and, and stop you know, on top of the tanks to offload the load. Mm -hmm. So usually gas stations has wider driveways than a shopping center. 
because it's not only cars, there is, you know, uh, the, the truck, and then there is uh, trailers, and people go. So can you tell me how the existing tanker circulation works? Uh, they, they, come, uh, they come from this driveway on frontage, and they stop on top of the existing tanks, and then they exit from, from this driveway. They go like that. We closed this driveway. We moved it over here. So it's basically the same. The route that we have is almost the same, but with less driveways. Did you look at other sizes for the convenience store? It's not only um, pretty big square footage wise, it's also quite tall. It's twice as high as the existing little thing. Uh, the, the, the height is standard, usually a commercial building, 15 feet to the roof, and you need a, a, a parapet on top of it to hide the HVAC units yep. and stuff. So. Um, we're not, we're not higher than any normal sto uh, uh, sea store that we build today. And regarding the size, usually, you know, this size, uh, which is uh, 2589, it's not 2700, 2589 square feet. 2500, less than 2500 square feet is really not gonna justify rebuilding this gas station. Please remember, the owner is going to have to spend about $2.1 million on this thing. So he needs profit center here so he can you know, justify the investment. Or otherwise, I mean, he, he's going to keep the gas station as is. Okay. Any other questions? Um, my only other question is whether the inter internally lit LED lights are going to be uh, dimmable. If they turn out to be brighter than people are anticipating, will they be dimmable? Uh, is that for the signs? Mm -hmm. Well, that and the uh, canopy. We, we can put a condition of approval on it and we can accommodate that. LED is very sophisticated lights. Yeah. Basically using the LED not because be to save energy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only, when they are, you know, more technological advanced mm -hmm. than other lights, than the fluorescents and incandescents. So, yeah, we can put a, a condition of approval on it and we'll comply with it. Is the existing sign LED? I would assume not. Uh, no. Okay. That's uh, fluorescents. Mm hmm Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any member of the public wishing to speak on this item? So you are opening the public hearing? I, I am. Sorry. <laughs> I'm opening the public hearing. Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing. And del deliberations. Does anyone have anything that Well, I use this gas station all the time because it's the closest one to where I live. Um, I think it's a fairly clean new building. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I... I never buy anything in those gas station stores anyway, so that I can't identify with them. But I guess um, what I've heard rumored is that the owners don't make a lot of money on the gas they pump. Their primary source of income comes from these stores. Huh. Um, but I'm not one of the customers, so I don't know what to say about it. I, I have a question to Arlie or Charlie about when I was out looking at the gas station site, there's also, aside from the little monument sign with the prices on it, there's all kinds of miscellaneous signs about lottery tickets and all these different things. Is that something that is supposed to be out there or? Those are all illegal signs. So they're, they, <laughs> we can assume that those will go away, right? Mm. Certainly during construction. <laughs> Great. <laughs> is, is there going to be an ATM in there? Are we. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there will be. Oh. 
but it won't have a sign on the outside saying that. Oh. Arlie, I have a question, or Charlie, um, in relation to that, uh, extending the planting area into the right of way, is there any kind of problem with that? I don't think so. I mean, the, the planting that they're showing mm -hmm. is new, mm -hmm. so it would be a reconfiguration of what would be new anyway. And, and as Arlie explained in her presentation, this project was vetted at the Development Coordinating Committee. Public Works was there. They didn't have any concerns about about that. In fact, they're pretty excited about the uh, you know reconfiguration of the sidewalk and all the Bay Trail amenities. I would note that I believe police was at that DCC meeting as well and didn't express any particular security concerns. That's correct. Okay. I I have a I sort of have a couple questions uh, for other commissioners since we're on the topic of landscaping. Um, I had a thought that since the applicant is reluctant or unwilling to move the uh, convenience store to the corner, um, that it would make sense to have taller landscaping along in that planter um, to screen. I mean, you, you w can still see the canopy clearly, but there's no reason you need to see the cars and the pumps. So it seems to me like we could have some taller shrubs in that planter. Um, and it might actually sort of frame that area, that new area for the Bay Trail a little better. Um, and so I was just wanted to sort of ask uh, other commissioners who have more of a background in landscape design if, uh, you know, if you knew of any Bay friendly and perhaps even native shrubs that might be appropriate for that area. Would you think of a, a three foot high hedge or something like that? Something like that, yeah. I mean, one of my comments is that I think that the landscape plan needs a little bit of work because we've got a gas station looks like a gas station. It would be nice to have a little bit more low screening in the front and it would also be nice to have a little bit more screening around the edges because contrary to what you're looking at on this rendering, the planting plan is it's some grasses, mostly grasses in a flat area that look across to where the hotel parking lot is. So I think we need to do a little bit more to soften the edges of it. And similarly, the I don't mind so much the convenience store with the windows in the front and all that, but the back side, the, the rear sides need some kind of enhancement. I mean, the three dimensionality comment, I think, needs to be addressed a little bit with some more articulation of that building or some more patterning or something on the back and something on the sides where people are going by and looking at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, altogether, I don't mind that the convenience store is at the back because when you come through Powell Street, seeing a great big store, that it, I don't think that that would look too attractive. I think it's nice that it's set back a little because it's not, um, it's not in your face so much. But I think it does need a little bit of um, enhancement. If it's not in your face that much and there's security issues surrounding this type of use, the line of sight from passerbys is compromised, especially if you put something along the edges. So I'm not so sure you want to add anything that's three feet high because your eye level while you're driving is not much more than three feet, three and a half feet high. And if they rely on line of sight for security, we're compromising their security. Plus, I, I couldn't tell if there was a robbery going on there based on not a lot of glass facing Powell at this point. So there are some security concerns in the design. I would disagree with that. I think that the... Uh, the planting bed that is on the corner is sufficiently surrounded with um, sidewalk. There's no line of sight that is impeded. Oh, but if you raise it three feet, as proposed uh, by a couple just of the commissioners. Different heights of planting is, I think, what we're talking about. I heard about. three feet. Well, there, there is already proposed a shrub that gets about three feet. So we're just looking for a little more variety, a little bit more bay friendly, something that relates to the uh, the wetlands next door, maybe more rushes, and things that are see-through. There are still things that are see-through relatively. Hey, don't compromise this can, line of sight. Good. Yeah, this the, the thing that I'm pretty excited about having this redo is because it is one of the, the gateways to the city. So. I'm very happy to, to have this updated and upgraded, and I think it makes sense to have the store in the back to me. Uh, I think the, the, sign, the signage when you're coming down Powell towards the marina is very discreet. It is the awning and the one sign on the awning, and so I think there's been some 
uh, sophistication uh, upgrade to the the signage, and I think that's good. But I, uh, in terms of the planting, it just it needs to be uh, more interesting and some more softening. There, the the rendering on the uh, the color rendering does, as um, Gail mentioned, have a lot of foliage in the back where there's actually just a parking lot, pretty much. So and one little strip of planting. So anything we can do to maximize the uh, the bicycle pump station and the very entrance to our city that entrance would would really go a long way and um, less of just the flat flat ground cover and more rhythm and variation would, would be helpful commissioner Coomerly, how do you how do you feel about uh, crepe myrtles the appropriateness of crepe myrtles as in the landscaping and, and Brisbane box as street trees well, the, the crepe myrtles are very small, very tiny trees. They often get uh, um, powdery mildew in this climate because it were so foggy, so it's not an ideal tree. It, they don't do as well in Emeryville as they do in Walnut Creek and places yeah. like that. They like heat. Mm -hmm. they, they like, like heat, heat, which so. we don't get. Um, there are a number of p other trees in, around the city that you could drive around and look at and note the ones that are doing well in the area because it is a, a high water table here as well so there's some issue with that and uh, that could maybe inform a better tree choice that's that's a good point well this rendering doesn't even show the trees that they're yeah I, I think landscape plan. the Brisbane box seems uh, reasonable though I'm, I don't have a lot of do you have a lot of um, they seem pretty bomb proof yeah they're tough it's mostly the crepe myrtle is not as good do they they get wide in canopy, or are they? They are they are wider in canopy than tall, and it looks like uh, that it might be better to have something that doesn't want to go com very horizontal here. But you know that would be up to your discretion. I guess. So one of my concerns was the width of the the tree wells is only two feet. Is that going to be sufficient for these size trees? Not and great. <laughs> And, and what the city though and, and that well it's a continuous strip it's not just a square and we have in our I mean I'm sure that there is a provision about the amount of rootable soil that's okay. required per tree because we tend okay. we put that in our in our conditions yeah okay. um, so I, I concur with a lot of the comments about the landscaping I think I'm, I'm fine with the building where it is that I think it's in general that this is a big improvement um, so um, kind of it is what it is it's a gas station that's it's gonna be a much better gas station than it is right now it's gonna look better it's gonna function better uh, it's gonna improve the Bay Trail so th those are all great things <clears throat> I, and I think and probably the, the area, area what I, where I would like to see the focus as other commissioners have voiced is the landscaping um, let's trying to do something as, as best as we can here um, and I think this is an also an opportunity for the Bay Trail and what I'd like to consider is having and the BPAC made a comment about this is um, either coloring the sidewalk because right now the, the Bay Trail is very ambiguous um, it kind of it's it's very clear as to what it does <coughs> along the Bay and then it gets to um, the building to the the north of the gas station and it kind of it turns into a sidewalk and it's it's not really clear where the trail is so I think this is a great opportunity to to emphasize that this is the Bay Trail and maybe we do it with colored concrete <coughs> as an option sure, um, if not colored con green colored con concrete to indicate that it is an actual bike trail uh, another thing that we might do is to a stamping in the concrete that shows a bike shows some sort of connection an arrow or something that that really makes it clear that the bay trail goes here the bay trail goes this way i think that would be a huge huge help and i think this is a great opportunity to do that and uh, there's already some uh no, I think this year. paint that's going on for the crossing yeah the, the, so there could just be another one at the at the, the pavement the corner I guess to say hey this is the direction yeah because when I when I looked at Google Earth tonight um, 
the, the crossing is really clear. They've done a really nice job of this is definitely where the crossing is. What's not clear is the route of the Bay Trail. Mm -hmm. It's really unclear. If, if so I could interrupt just for a moment, uh, the Bay Trail is improving their signage. I believe sometime this year, 2013, um, they're going to be putting a lot more signs, okay. and I believe directional signs as well okay. um, in the near Great. future. So, okay. so that at least will become be a help. Yeah, yeah. I'd also I'd note that the conditions of approval, the way they're written, require the Bay Trail people uh, which is basically a bag. It's kind of a subset of a bag to approve this Bay Trail kiosk map sign mm -hmm. thing. So we want to make sure that it's what they want and that it's consistent with what they have around the rest of the bay for the Bay Trail. So they may have some ideas about signage as well. Mm -hmm. But as Arlie said, we are due to get a whole bunch more Bay Trail signs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that'll help. I'd, I'd like to other people to consider the the colored concrete or stamping with something something special that emphasizes it. Um, the BPAC committee also mentioned bollards. Um, might be a good idea there to just give it more of a safe feeling for pedestrians. Um, where? When, when, where? Um, and the whole corner possibly uh, in front of the park branch and in front of the, the bike fix station. I think that was maybe the intent of the, the BPAC. Hmm. Um, because that corner, I, I see cars zipping around there pretty fast, um, and that that might be something that just gives the pedestrians a little better feeling of safety. Um, and the other concern was really the the size of the monument sign being eight feet high and ten feet wide. I, I'm, I'm trying to visualize that, and I look at that door frame is I'm sure probably less than eight feet and so it would be wider than that and about as tall as that which seems really really big for a monument sign um, and I'd like to gather thoughts on, on that if, if others it's bigger than any other in the city then right it's, and it's twice twice the size of the existing one I believe the existing sign um, is five feet high and eight feet across, and this would be eight feet high and ten feet across. Okay, so I, I think I'd like to stick more with the size of the existing sign, or have that considered. But other than that, that's uh, pretty much my comments. I'd like to piggyback on the Bay Trail Bay Trail comment and. Also, it, uh, since uh, one of the conditions is to make sure that a bathroom access is for the people that use the Bay Trail, I, I would like to hope that the sign would include that as well as a, an amenity that's available to them, mm -hmm. courtesy of the Shell Station. But I guess that would end up going off to the BPAC. Is that correct, Charlie? No. You, no? you mean okay. for a recommendation or? The BPAC doesn't have to... Uh, or, I'm sorry, the Bay Trail, uh, the Bay... The Bay Trail people. Yes, I'm sorry, oh. the Bay Trail people. Um, yeah, but if you want that information on that sign, I don't think there's any reason not to. Okay, well, that's a thought to consider. Or a, well, mm -hmm. let's say a separate sign, but then you got a lot of signs. Probably all want to, just the one sign. One sign. Yeah. One sign. So since we seem to be going sort of topically, um, I have also some comments about the Bay Trail. Um, I'm, I'm fairly concerned about the that the interface of that driveway with, with the Bay Trail. Um, I know I, I've had multiple near misses um, at that driveway and the one for the Hilton Garden Inn. Um, and so I, I think the existing condition is um, is pretty lacking actually and pr pretty unsafe and I, I I appreciate we're trying to make it safer with signage um, but I think we've made the driveway wider um, and that really concerns me um, and I, I don't know that it, that it needs to be that wide I, I think it might be I think it would improve safety a lot to limit the the area where you actually have a conflict between motorized vehicles and bicycles and pedestrians well, I thought that driveway width was really determined by the, the conditions required by the fuel trucks, which are 60 feet long and uh, need that space to get in. 
At least that's how it was explained to us. There are two driveways now, and it's going down to one. So the total amount of driveway width you're crossing is reduced from what it is now. Yeah, I think it's it's reduced, but I think it's going to get it's going to get more traffic because you have the you have all of the well, you only have two driveways now instead of three, so you have more more of the gas station traffic is going to be through any one of the driveways and then as well the car wash driveway is eliminated so everybody coming out of the car wash is going to exit there as well well it looks like the car wash people will probably go out to powell uh, because they would have to go through a fueling tank a space to uh, get out onto uh, the frontage road seems like the, the main conflict would be bicyclists and pedestrians walking south uh, as the cars enter most likely off the freeway from from the from the north going south into it would there would it would a, a sign there be I, I actually think there's more of a conflict for uh, bicyclists and pedestrians heading north because the the visibility when you when you're turning into the gas station I think you have better visibility of the of the sidewalk and of the bay trail than people uh, coming out there you know you you can have a bicyclist coming up this way and not necessarily see them as you're as you're pulling out of the gas station um, I think that that could be dealt with with appropriate signage and I think we should re put that as a condition of approval that there be signage there that's warning about bicycles and whether it's painted on the paving or whether it's a freestanding sign I don't think that um, Actually, I don't think that narrowing the driveway it. is going to um, accomplish what you need to accomplish and I think it looks like it's needed for the truck to get in and get the fuel in we didn't include that in the conditions because they've included it in the, in the project. There, there are stencils on the bike path that say driveway crossing ahead, and then there are signs in the driveway that say pedestrian bike trail crossing, and as Arlie said, also a stop sign. That signage that Charlie just mentioned is only for cars exiting onto Powell. Right. That sign could And frontage. On, yeah, exiting both of both. Yeah driveways that signage could be added to just to the right of um, the driveway for people entering yeah at, at a minimum I would like to see a sign um, for people entering from frontage road and also stenciling for people exiting uh, onto frontage road stenciling the sign on the pavement as well as the signage yeah they watch for bikes or yeah bike 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 trail crossing, crossing. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you raised another a, a conflict that I run into um, at the union or on the, the gas station on the corner of Christie and Powell. If you look at the landscape plan at the far uh, upper right hand corner, the sidewalk there, I think we should take special care that that's highly visible with the landscaping and that that's an area where the landscaping should be low mm -hmm. because um, the visibility is really bad at um, Powell and Christie at the gas station there and causes all kinds of conflicts and I would also uh, like to make sure that the LED signs are Dimmable, including the uh, the price signs that are especially those actually that are um, exposed LED and will be dimmed if complaints arise. So you will uh, comply to that. That would be a condition of approval. I I would like to see the the loop sign and the car wash sign as as halo lit signs rather than uh, internally illuminated channel letters. Um, I just think they're they're much classier signs, um, and they'll really, I think they'll they'll just benefit the business a lot. I think they'll they'll um, they'll just pop a lot more, and um, I think it's just a win-win for everybody. Does anyone else have any feelings about that? I think that's a great idea. Um, I guess I'm looking for input from other commissioners on the size of the monument sign. 
Mm-hmm. One thing I would just note about monument signs is, um, well, signs in general, but uh, when you're driving by anyway, signs tend to be bigger than you think they are. Uh, I remember when the Chevron station at Powell and Hollis uh, was reconstructed maybe 10 years ago or so, and they were going to put in a monument sign, and they wanted it a certain size, and we thought that was way too big. So, And I was keeping in mind the, all the various Chevron stations I've seen around Berkeley that all had monument signs, which seemed quite low, and I, I guessed that they were probably about four feet tall. So I went around to the various Chevron stations in Berkeley with my tape measure and measured them, and they were all six feet tall. They were taller than, than, than I am, you know, and I was surprised that they were as tall as they were because from a distance driving by, they looked a lot smaller. So, but I mean, you do have an existing sign to compare this to, so you, you have a sense of, you know, scale. I, I just keep looking at that doorway over there and the size of that doorway, and it's like the sign is got to be bigger than the doorway, which seems... I'm not sure how visible they are, but we could go back and look at the existing photos. Um, okay. So this sign here is five feet tall. And there it is. Mm-hmm. And it would go up to eight feet tall. And the canopy is going to be the same height or higher of, for the pumps? The Do you is the canopy saying the same height? Uh, the canopy, it's required per code could, to... Um, yeah, the canopy, the bottom of the canopy has to be not less than 13 feet 6 inches. Mm -hmm. But from experience, that height, a lot of people hit the canopy. And you've probably seen canopy in the past where, you know, it's bented, you know. So usually we do the canopy at 15, uh, the bottom, 15 feet or 15 feet 6 inches to keep and it nice. And this one's 13 here? No, 15, one five. Well, the, the one in the picture, one. existing. Do you know how tall the existing, the existing one, one is? The existing one, I am not sure. They usually um, probably about around 13 or 13.6. The code required minimum 13.6. I actually, now that you're here, I have one more question. Um, sure. The white uh, canopy, is uh, how, how are you going to clean that? Is that... Because it's, that's, that's it's right on the freeway. It's going to get Yeah, uh, That's a fast. mansard, um, uh, it's aluminum uh, composite metal ACM. Mm -hmm. And um, usually, I, you know, the canopy, the all standard canopy, chevron shell, they have this material. Mm -hmm. Aluminum composite metal, very nice material, you know. Uh, so I don't think it's going to require cleaning. Because it's curved, so I, I was, it's not just a straight up and down. I wasn't. Yes. So you haven't had trouble with uh, other We haven't gas had gas a trouble with ACM. Okay. You know, <coughs> it's very nice material. Okay. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I was going to try to make a motion or at least suggest somebody make a motion. Uh -huh. Well, I, I, have, I have a question of staff and one more uh, comment to share. Um, the, what was my question of staff? Um, oh, the... Um, so the carbon cylinders for the vapor lock system, is there, is there a requirement that those, I, I mean, I, I would imagine those would be considered m mechanical equipment. That, uh, is there a requirement that they be screened somehow? Is that what this is? Huh. That There's is a probably what that is, yeah. Well, it certainly looks better screened than not screened. Um, yeah, I, I would like to um, propose a condition of approval that they that they not be visible from um, that they not be visible to a pedestrian from frontage or or Powell Street. There is a standard oh. condition that that all equipment be screened, so that would cover that. Um, obviously, it's not shown on the current plan, um, but okay. Just I mean, when I when a project gets approved here and then it submits for building, I take a copy of all the conditions and I highlight everything I'm looking at and I just go through. So if it's in the conditions, then it'll get caught. Okay, keep an eye on it because I, I frequently see those located where it's convenient rather than where it's aesthetically pleasing. There's also a, a provision in the planning regulations that requires screening of mechanical and electrical equipment. So 
uh, at or below the level of the equipment. You may remember that. So we had that discussion about roof height and you know at the same level as the roof. So in this case, it would be at you know ground level or wherever this equipment was. So even if it weren't in the conditions which it is, it would still be subject to this provision of the code. So I said I had a comment, but I think I lied. I can't remember it. So. Well, I'm I'm inclined to go with six foot for that uh, that monument sign. Eight foot is very tall. Um, I I would sympathize. With that. Any kind of straw poll on that? Anyone else have any thoughts? It seems big enough. There's a lot. I mean. The canopy is a sign. The there's a pole sign. There's there's enough advertising. I mean, it's important that the prices be legible, but they can be legible a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if everyone's done with comments, I would I'll make a motion. <laughs> so I'd make a motion to approve with some amendments, some conditions of approval. Uh, the sign, the existing, mo or the monument sign be six foot tall. No more than. No more than six foot tall. Uh, and do we care about the width? Appropriately proportioned. Appropriately proportioned. Sounds fine. <laughs> uh, that we have signage added for the existing frontage uh the i'm sorry the existing uh yeah entering the frontage and the, the exit either whatever seems appropriate in terms of whether it be um paint or and or uh raise, raise signs i'm not so sure well what i heard was th what's already proposed are stencils on the uh, bike path and signs for cars exiting from the driveway. And what I heard was additional stenciling on the driveway for the cars exiting and signs for the cars entering from frontage road. Is that mm -hmm. right? right? Yes. Yes. Um, that the LED signs be dimmable and will be dimmed if any complaints arise. And uh, that the loop sign and the car wash sign be backlit. Halo, well, yeah, backlit. Um, and that the uh, there will be improvements in the plant species selection, uh, that the crate myrtles will be substituted for a better tree, and that there is a maximum square footage addition to the landscaping at the corner and wrapping the, uh, <clears throat> the bench and the, the bike fix-it station to make it a more imageable and memorable corner for our city. Did I get it all? Well, how about the um, colored concrete or something to indicate the Bay Trail? S so. Is that within our purview to do that? Is that, that's off property. property. That's in the public right of way. Are we able to do that? I'm confused, yeah. Like um, I think the public works director has some thoughts on that. Unfortunately, he's not here. Uh, if we're going to do something like that, it seems like it ought to be more holistic, more of a citywide yeah. thing that would cover the Bay Trail all the way from Ashby to at least Shell Mound. I feel so like if it's just in this one corner, it's kind of like what is going on. If it was continuous throughout the whole Bay Trail, it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, um, there's, I, I, I agree with that, <clears throat> but also I know that the Bay Trail right now doesn't function very well because of, and maybe the improved signage that'll, that's coming will help, but maybe a compromise is just to um, a stamped concrete you know, that has a bike that says Bay Trail or something with an arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, something, it doesn't have to be extravagant, just e even if it's one slab of the sidewalk uh, that indicates that this is where the Bay Trail goes. Well, so are you saying like stamped or are you saying? Signs and, uh, are you saying stamped or stenciled? Stamped, I think, would be preferred. Well, wasn't there some public art uh, element that was needed to be included? Could there be some kind of stamped or m medallion placed in the concrete there? It's the applicant's choice to either pay a fee or provide the art. Mm -hmm. So the, either way, it's the same value, and it's a percentage of the construction cost. 
I'd, I'd be open but to that idea. That would be a well, lovely idea. The right? public art is technically, I believe, supposed to be on the private property and not on oh, the yes. public right of way. Oh, well. To to I'll what go. extent <laughs> is to what extent is flat work going to be required, or, or to what extent is concrete work going to be required by the sort of reconfiguration of the, of the driveway? I believe Already all new the, curb and gutter yeah. sidewalk is always being poured. Oh. So Either along the whole frontage, we're getting new sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Believe so. Yes. Okay. So, it seems like if we're getting new sidewalk, we can have a require them to way way arrow added in for the bay trail. I'm not so sure how how we can. I'm I not. Don't, I don't. I don't really think that there's a value in doing something integral to the concrete that's just going to happen in this one spot. I can see a stencil or something saying Bay Trail because it is confusing. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping the signage will make a big difference okay. because it's confusing all the, mm -hmm. you know, all the way up past Chevy's mm -hmm. and under Powell and everywhere else. But I don't think that doing something to the concrete in this one spot is going to resolve that. Can I make a suggestion? That um, that it be the same color of concrete, but not not the texture, because I hate that texture. But the same color of concrete as the plaza at Shorebird Park, because that's pretty consistent. There would be one there would be one gap then probably in front of Hilton Garden, but other than that, it would be pretty consistent. There is some kind of special paving in front of. Uh What's the address of that high rise? 2000 Powell? 2100. 2100 Powell. But I'm not sure it's the same color as Shorebird Park. Might be. What, what is the treatment? It's kind sort of, of like it's, a, it's a textured, which it's, is it's an awful, awful. <laughs> if you're riding a bike. At Shorebird it's Park, it's like these cobblestones. 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 It's terrible. Yeah. We all hate it. It's <laughs> terrible. We don't want that. Well, we don't want the texture, but I don't. Well, I think the, the color the is color. Fine. Yeah. Right. It's kind of a pinky hue. We already have new concrete at the corner, and we're going to start patching in different colors. I'd rather see it match and look yeah. like it, it's one piece. May I, may I suggest that you perhaps express your strong preference to me to convey to the Public Works Director for a uniform and legible treatment of the Bay Trail throughout the city? That sounds Excellent. Like a great that sounds really <laughs> great, Charlie. Good. Thank you. Perfect. I, Happy to help. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> and then, did I mention having a note on the sign about that the bathroom was available? You, you did not mention that, but I did have a note about that. Okay. So. Uh, that's the motion. That was a little. That was a lot of things. Maybe you could. Um, I'll try to recap. Back to uh, in no particular order. <clears throat> Let's see. Re um, all the signs shall be dimmable and shall be dimmed if uh, complaints are received. And may I add to that, to the satisfaction of the planning director, so we That's have some closure. Uh, that the loop and car wash signs would be backlit. That there will be additional trail stencils on the driveway exiting the gas station and signage for cars entering from Powell Street. I mean, from Frontage Road. Uh, signs to include. The Bay Trail sign to include information that the bathrooms are open to Bay Trail users at all times. Um, the monument sign shall be no more than six feet wide and appropriately proportioned, which I assume means six the, feet tall. The, feet tall. Six feet tall. I'm sorry, oh. six feet tall, and the, <sighs> the appropriate proportions I assume means proportions of the proposed eight foot tall sign. In other words, the width would shrink proportionally. Would shrink proportionally. Okay. Uh, then there was a couple of conditions about landscaping, which I must confess I didn't quite fully understand. Well, there's one about uh, landscaping, reconfiguring the landscape strip at the corner to enclose the bench and the fixed station area. That's pretty clear. Uh, a better tree than crepe myrtle, and I, I heard something about just better landscaping. I'm not quite sure. Well, I think we wanted more variety in height. Uh, but when you look at the landscaping plan, they have a, lot, a number of different uh, plant material in there which would appear to come up to different heights, but the, land, the, the uh, rendering doesn't show that. So uh, may I suggest that the, the conditions say that the landscaping be, plan be revised 
to the satisfaction of the planning director who may consult with Chair Coomerly and Commissioner Donaldson in that endeavor? That sounds okay. okay. Is that, do you mind being consulted? No. <laughs> I would just add that uh, we'd like to maximize the planting area in that, along that uh, corn corridor, corner corridor as well. Right, reconfigure to maximize the planning stream. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is there anyone? I'd second, second that. that? <laughs> okay. Excuse me? I second all of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we can call the roll. All right, did we get it all? Yes, we That's did. I think, so. I, I think so. Okay, Commissioner Donaldson? Aye. Commissioner Moss? Aye. Commissioner Sherman? Aye. Commissioner Steinberg? Aye. Vice Chair Cardoza? Aye. Chair Coomerley? Aye. Six ayes. The application is approved. This decision may be appealed to the City Council within 15 days. I think it will clean up the corner a little bit. I think there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff sticking up at, at, at that gas station and it'll look better. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a regional serving and it'll also now be uh, other kinds of transportation serving as well, feet and bikes. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right. All right, you're up. Our next item on the agenda